Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everyone. This is Rob from RV Talk Radio. This is episode 99. So nice to uh, be talking to you again. We had to take a few uh, episodes off because of some major stuff we're doing with the company. And uh, I think I'll uh, explain a little bit of that to you and then we'll get on the subject. So let me explain. On this show today, uh, I, I actually had a request from one of our listeners to uh, that actually uh, enjoyed the uh, Gunsmoke. <laughs> I had to think about it, so many shows we got. The Gunsmoke episode we put on one of our shows, and uh, I think I'll go ahead and do that on this show um, after I get over some of the major news here. So, uh, for the first half hour... We'll be talking RV Talk Radio stuff, and then the last half hour, we'll put a, a, a episode of Gunsmoke on it. And to explain where all this stuff is coming from is, so here's the reality of all channels out there. So you may be watching certain channels right now, and maybe it's Gone with the Winds, or maybe it's Do It Justice, or maybe you're watching uh, the Freedom Theory and stuff, and... They're all great shows, and, and some of them we watch and try to catch. But one thing that's going to happen for sure is things are going to change. It just This is how it is. Whether uh, financially or whether it's they're getting older or uh, having uh, children, children getting older, things like that. And the channels will change, and they'll modify them or whatever. And, and I guess... Uh, we're kind of doing the same here, only in a grander scale. So, uh, you know, for those of you who know us, we have Outdoor Travel Channel, and we have several other things. We have an art channel and a vegan channel. and um, But one of the big things we do now, especially since I'm retired, is uh, we're doing a lot in radio. And so you kind of heard us talk about it here and there, and kind of we're trying to define it. Well, we finally to find it and this particular show is a big part of it too so the reason i've been gone so much is we've been working a lot a lot of hours to build everything and so what we created was cutting edge radio network what is cutting edge radio network well it's a network of our own radio channels and podcasts and there's shows and people, and, and you may not know this, and as we discovered as time goes on, is there's places all over each state's got different kinds of people that do their own radio show. And they may only do like a little three-hour radio show every Saturday. And some do it daily and stuff like that. And then what they want is be syndicated out to other shows. And so that's what we do, is now that we have cutting edge radio network we syndicate our own shows and other people's shows into our radio stations so what do you mean by radio stations well we have two radio stations we have good music radio which you've heard us talk about a little bit and we also own good talk radio those are two full-time internet radio stations and we have three podcasts we have rv talk radio arizona talk radio and good old radio which is old radio um, golden age radio stuff and <clears throat> so it was time to either say you know either we drop something or we got to do you know get this organized so we decided to organize it and so now you know we had to create uh two new st um, one station was going already but needed to be modified and up to date and then a new one was created which was good talk radio and the podcasts had to be kind of modified and of course the websites all had to be modified and then there was cutting edge radio network which is the heart and soul of the whole thing and so now for example if you have a podcast 
and maybe you just do your podcast once a week. If you build your podcast where you only do a half hour podcast or just do an hour and you stay within that definition of time, you can have your podcast syndicated out to companies like ours. In some cases, there may be trade. Some cases, there is a fee. Some cases, there is, uh, uh, I don't know, pretty much that. Or there's shared revenue. And, and those uh, that's the kind of thing that makes these things go. So that's what's going on. So RV Talk Radio, this show right here, is on Good Talk Radio. Uh, and it has its regular, uh, has, it's played two times a day. Because you got to remember, we have over 100 episodes. So they're there all the time. Uh, Arizona Talk Radio uh, podcast is also on Good Talk Radio. Along with some major, uh, we have a three-hour morning show from some folks in, uh, it's called Coop and Crew. And uh, No hold, Holds Barred, their three-hour radio um, morning show. We have the new Ranger Rob morning show, which is actually my show. And then we have uh, some church stuff on Sundays. One is um, a music show, and we also have a um, Praise the Lord show. Anyway, it's just it's just crazy. So you can see how buried we have been. So it's been really hard to get RV Talk Radio out for the last two episodes. So it's like, let's just give it a rest. We got our, uh, you know, so many episodes that hopefully everybody can uh, either go visit some of the old vi uh, uh, episodes and, and we've been loading some of the, our uh, best episodes onto Good Talk Radio. So you confused yet? So here's a secret that, well, not a secret, but this might help you out with podcasts. If you like to listen to podcasts and you have a cell phone, go to Google Play. This is free and there's no we don't get a commission on this stuff. And I'll put a link in the description how to do this. Download Podcast Addict, A-D-D-I-C-T, -A um, Podcast Addict. And what's really cool about that program I discovered is that's what I use to listen to podcast shows I want. So when you get that on there, it's free. And then you go into the search section and then you tell it, make sure it's it's searching iTunes because most of the big shows are all in iTunes. So anyway, um, you go into the search, you type in good uh, RV talk radio and you do that and you'll see our, our show show up and you subscribe. Then you type, type in good old radio and you find that and you subscribe and then you type in uh, Arizona talk radio and you find it and, and you subscribe to those shows. Those are the podcasts. But there's another section in that software for internet radio. In that section, just type in good music radio and it'll come up and you subscribe and then you put in your favorites. And then type in um, good talk radio and you find it and you put that in your favorites. And so then you can easily find the 24 seven radio shows that we have. Now, if you go to the website, you'll see a complete listing of the schedules of all the different shows we have during the days and in the evenings. Uh, like Good Music Radio is more focused on musical stuff, where Good Talk Radio is going to be all kinds of different kinds of formats of talk shows. And so, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Very uh, confusing. And oh, by the way, on Good Talk Radio, for those of you that like those uh, uh, old time radio shows, we have scheduled several different episodes and se and series that you may enjoy, like Gunsmoke and Sherlock Holmes and uh, a Long Ranger and Superman and things like that. So yeah, a lot of fun, great radio station. So one of the big things I wanted to point out about radio stations on the internet is you'll find them a lot different and a lot more. F they're a lot more fun. Uh, than your typical one in your car. And and by the way, if you got Podcast Attic in your cell phone, nowadays you can plug your cell phone right into your car. Uh, a lot of new cars have auxiliary plug-ins. Or, or you could just use a cassette adapter that you just put into your cassette player in your car and plug that straight into your cell phone. And it plays just like a radio. It's really cool. So yeah, it's um, so if you ever get a chance to check out internet radios, it's kind of neat because there's a lot of freedom um, because it's not on public airways. And so 
the language might be a little bit more intense. Uh, however, the variety of speakers and, and, and jokes and things like that are just kind of down to earth a little bit more, a lot more freedom and flexibility. And so, yeah, it, it's a lot of fun to check it out. I definitely want to take the time to say thank you for all the people that give us feedback and notes and references to different kinds of articles. Uh, Tyler Pettitier, I don't know if I said that right, or Pettier, I hope I said that right. I apologize if I got it wrong. Anyway, he has been really good about sending us articles. And there is one article that was kind of disturbing a little bit. And it had to do with the subject I'm always talking about in here. And, and it's... Um, I guess that's probably why I talk about it is kind of concerning. It seems like a trend that I don't really like seeing when, when it talks about where our community and where our uh, state of well-being is as a country is becoming. But And it's not just one reason, but a, a, a lot of people that, uh, and we're talking even people in their 50s, 60s, and 70s, that had a plan to retire and then 2008 came along and a lot of people and their investment was their house and then when everybody went underwater or a lot of people lost their houses or a lot of layoffs for people that are in their 50s and so uh they were devastated and so what has happened is a lot of people have gone into the nomad kind of lifestyle and followed the work as far as uh like work camping kind of jobs, uh, sugar beets, working for Amazon, uh, things like that, working for uh, state fairs and following the work. And it's not in this, in this article, um, which was um, written by nextavenue.org, I believe it's. Um, and so it's kind of, uh, it's a article that was forwarded to another group. Anyway, they were talking and reporting about these people are you know working terrible hours. Older people are on their feet a lot, especially with the Amazon stuff. It's not really that pleasant of kind of lifestyle. And so though in a lot of places that they go, like Amazon that stuff, they're going to places where the weather's really cold. And they're not necessarily comfortable. And so I don't know, it's just concerning to know that that's what's going on. You know, it's it's just an example. I don't know how big a percentage of RVers are nomadic because of this. And because I, I see a lot of nomadic people doing it because I think they're just lazy um, or don't want to be in a real society of work. But I have news for them. If they want to live like nomads now, they're probably going to end up living like nomads later. And if they're happy with that, great. But if you had bigger dreams and bigger things you want to do in life, uh, probably learning a trade and getting into a company and kind of working your way up and maybe starting a business or something might be a better uh, route than trying to make a living uh, as an e-beggar or trying to write an e-book or sell Amazon products on your website. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> there took a swing at them again, sorry. Anyway, so, uh, and of course, there's a whole nother side of RVing that's totally opposite of this. There's million dollar RVs out there at million dollar lots. I think Line Screw just did a, a video about someone selling a $1.2 million lot for an RV in Florida. Um, and when they're not using it for themselves, they rent it out. So I don't know if that's a great investment or not, but uh, it's definitely a, a different lifestyle than what we're talking about with this nomad stuff. So once again, um, concerning if, if this, I totally get it when it comes to, let's say you are lucky enough maybe to get some social security where a lot of companies stop pensions and, and they told people you need to rely on doing a 401k and that didn't always work out for folks. Um, that they're on a fixed income and they maybe only make a thousand if they're lucky a month and they've got to live within their means. So instead of being a burden of society, they go into this nomadic kind of life, find themselves a used RV or van and live 
the, as comfortable as possible within the means of their income. And that's commendable. That's awesome. That's, um, that's great. I, it's sad, especially if they wish that they were living a better lifestyle. Uh, but if they're comfortable and the community's good and then it's embracing and they're happy and they're keeping up, uh, they're f able to eat the way they want and then they're getting the health that they care, care coverage that they probably truly need, I, I can only pray that that's the situation. And so I guess it's, you know, when I see the nomadic people that have to do this to survive, and then the nomadic people out there that are doing it because they're trying to cheat life a little bit. I guess I get a little Twitter pated about that. Sorry. But uh, I can definitely see why there's a lot of older adults that have to consider this nomadic lifestyle in a used RV or van uh, to make ends meet. And uh, it's kind of sad. But it's kind of good that the fact they found a way to do it. So good for you guys. So uh, I'm going to try to put a link to this article in the description of this show. So hopefully you get a chance you can, uh, you can see it. And uh, there will be links to the radio shows and stuff we've been talking about. So make sure you visit the description on this particular show so you can kind of see some of the stuff we're talking about here. Uh, insanity. <laughs> it's going to be tons of links on this particular description. Sorry about that, but yeah, keeping it busy. Well, over the weekend, uh, Sherry and I went to Fountain Hills uh, Art Festival, which we went to last year and really enjoyed it, but didn't give ourselves enough time. And we took Cinder with us and that made it kind of uh, a lot of a lot of people, a lot of crowds, and it, was, uh, it wasn't that enjoyable because I was always worried about Cinder. So we didn't take Cinder this time. And we thought we got there at a reasonable time, but uh, anyway, we ended up staying there till it closed till five or something like that. But uh, it was kind of interesting because Sherry and I, you know, are doing some more, you know, doing a little more art, and so we're doing a thing called resin pouring. Um, it's you know taking colored resins and doing these beautiful little, uh, uh, and and I'll put a link to that site too. <laughs> um, we have a channel for that. It's called Northwest Custom Images, and it shows you how we make these things. And so it's just a fun thing. And if uh, we make a couple extra bucks off of it, great, you know, whatever. But anyway, so we go to all these different booths, and we're talking uh, over a hundred booths. It's got to be well over. It's a big show, and and so once in a while you come against uh, or up to a tent that has art or something similar to what me and Sherry are doing so we you know take the time to talk to them and uh you know some people say well that's what I'm going to do I'm going to sell my art and go to these shows and stuff but uh a lot of them I talk to is like uh you know they spend the day it seems like more of trying to cover the cost of how much it was to put their booth there than uh making a profit uh, now there's exceptions to that depends what you're selling but once again that's another thing to think about is uh, uh, if that's something you want to do to make extra money on the road uh, be aware that uh, make sure you go to some of these uh, uh, Saturday markets and, and art shows and stuff and talk to the people that have booths a lot of them will be very um, candid with you about what it takes for them to do that and whether they're actually making enough money to pay for it, because if it costs a thousand dollars to have a booth, I mean, you got to sell a thousand dollars worth of stuff just to break even, and and that's not what you're going there for. You're trying to sell your stuff to make some extra money, and so, uh, do you have products strong enough to beat the amount of what it costs to have a booth at a uh, Saturday market or a, a festival like that? As um, if unless there's other means of finding ways of selling your product. So I found that kind of interesting and uh, a little disturbing of how many I met that all had kind of the same comment. So be aware of that. If that's something you're thinking about, do your research, hit the bricks first, and go talk to people that are doing it already. And at least 
learn from them their lessons learned of what uh, what's worked best for them and what's most profitable what's uh you know what's a good common sense approach and process to selling your products on shows like that if you're going to travel and sell products the other observation that i wanted to bring up I was, i've been finding kind of interesting is we try to monitor things that are going out there on in the rv world and uh we keep seeing rv shows come and go and and, and they start off at a big bang and then uh you know, so right now this RV travel show, uh, radio show they're doing uh, seems kind of like a hot, trendy thing for now. But anyway, uh, but I have noticed a decline in in videos lately, and I think it's the time of year. So it's kind of funny. Summer comes out, and everybody's just pumping out the videos. Look at this. Look at that. Look at this. I broke down. I got a flat tire. Uh, and of course, then you go into fall. How to winterize? How to winterize? How to winterize? And now that they're kind of in the winter time, it's like you still see kind of videos for folks. A few folks have gone south, but most of them was like getting videos of how to live through 20 degree weather. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, and I haven't been seeing a lot of Arizona thing other than the RTR. And you heard me talk about that. And of course, he's pumping out videos of how to go to the RTR and how to be in, uh, how to survive without killing each other is pretty much what his videos are all about. And then trying to like warn off people that are going to cause problems like partiers and things like that. And so, uh, of course, these are nomads that kind of like to be alone. So when you put them in a group, they're probably a bunch of cranky people. So <laughs> anyway, uh, so seeing a lot of that, but all in all, things have been kind of on a, uh, decline as far as uh, you know uh, other than there's like one video I watched it's just a soap opera um, of, of emotion and you know, I mean they live in an RV and all that stuff but it's just constantly every third video some tears or something anyway but you know, people like that stuff but anyway <laughs> um, yeah just seen a, a decline lately I'm sure it'll pick up as I, love, I think a lot of people are in transition right now, but coming down south here in Arizona. And, uh, but yeah, I'm not seeing a lot. Some friends of ours just got down here in their RV. And of course, I don't know how this happened, but he, he pulls into his RV park and somehow caught something on his roof and damaged his uh, roof liner. And so he's uh, uh, automatically first week he's here he's got to put the rv into the shop to get a new roof thing put on it so i guess insurance covered it pretty good but it was an older rv so uh it took a lot of negotiation to find something that work out that didn't cost a fortune so but other than that he's happy to be in the nice warm weather as opposed to being in the uh, montana weather right now where they live so uh yeah i'm, I'm they're uh, enjoying the fact that you don't have to wear jackets every day now as for our RV, which is up in Central Oregon right now in the cold weather, I'm just hoping and praying that I winterized it correctly. Uh, I'm kind of guessing after Christmas I'm going to fly up there and rent a car and spend a week uh, over there and stay in my RV and make sure that I uh, that everything stored properly. I didn't have a mouse move in or anything like that. Uh, you know, kick out any little spiders that decides to move in. Uh, but all in all, uh, it's, it did good for the first two or three months that we were gone from it. and uh, But that was summertime and fall. Now that it's winter and freezing, it's like, all right, now the true test is, did I winterize that thing right? And uh, I thought I followed procedures pretty good. And uh, we'll, we'll find out, won't we? <laughs> I'm not going to like the surprise if there's something wrong, but uh, I'll probably be up there soon. So, and we'll check it out and um, do a lot of taping up in Central Oregon. Well, if you're an old timer like me, <laughs> old fart, uh, some of you might have grew up not necessarily on the shows that I'm going to, or the show I'm going to play for you today, but may, maybe grew up with a little bit of. Uh, 
Uh, I used to listen to something called the Macabre at night before I, uh, when I was a teenager. Uh, I played like 10 o'clock and it was like an hour worth of radio shows and there were mysteries or uh, uh, shows like that. And, but they're you know, a little bit more modern than the one I'm going to play for you today. Today, I'm going to share with you a uh, another Gunsmoke episode. And this particular one is called The Buffalo Hunter. And it's a kind of a special one I got out of the series uh, that we'll eventually be putting on the site of old, uh, good old radio and uh, also the supporting YouTube channel for it. And you can listen to it on the podcast. So anyway, but for you guys, I'm going to put it on this show. And so without further ado, I'm going to uh, say thank you so much for listening to RV Talk Radio. We'll be back on schedule uh, next week for, uh, for our 100th episode. Looking forward to that. And uh, anyway, we ask everybody that's RVing to be safe. Have a great winter. For those of you who came south, be safe on your trip down here. And thank you for listening to RV Talk Radio. So now let's kick back and listen to Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, the story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Take it easy, Mom. You know your young folks are going to eat when you give them sugar crinkles for breakfast. Yes, boys and girls love sugar crinkles. And no wonder, it's the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. Makes breakfast more fun than a circus. Now, the reason sugar crinkles suit young folks to a tea is this. Some sugar-coated cereals they've tried seem too sweet. Others don't seem sweet enough. But when they dip their first spoonful of sugar crinkles, mmm, they've discovered a sugar-coated cereal that's just right sweet. And say, those young folks of yours love to dip into the pack and eat sugar crinkles as a snack, too. So better get several packages. And now, Gunsmoke. Starring William Conrad. Mr. Dillon, look at those men down there by the jail. That's yeah, quite a crowd. Well, now, what's so curious about a wagon load of buffalo hide, to wonder? Uh, maybe they got a white one, Chester. They must have something mighty interesting. Yeah. Uh, this your wagon, mister? Nope. It's Gatlas. I skin for him. What's the crowd for? Just curious. The other skinner got hurt, and we brought him into the dock. Oh, what happened? Is he hurt bad? Bad enough Gatlas didn't see any sense in bringing him into town at all. Me and the cook, we made him, though. What? Oh, here's Gatliff now. Uh, Chester, go up to Doc's and see what you can find out, huh? Yes, sir. How is he, Gatliff? Eh, uh, Doc will take care of everything, Toby. Never mind that. How is he? He's dead. Let's drive these hides on down to the shed, huh? Come on. Just a minute, Gatliff. Some other time, Marshal, I'm busy. So am I. But I want to talk to you anyway. Uh, you and the... Cook, go get these hides unloaded, Toby. I'll be right along. Okay. Now, what do you want, Marshal? What happened to your skinner? Billy? He hurt himself, that's all. He's dead, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's dead. He got hurt and he died. That's all. When did he get hurt? Uh, last night. Then why didn't you bring him in last night? And them other fellas, the cook and Toby, they figured he was done for anyway. 
They didn't want to bother, I guess. What happened to him, Gatliff? How did he get hurt? I don't rightly know, Marshal. He was uh, alone in camp, and when we got there, he'd gone and burned himself. Burned? With uh, what? Hot lead, Marshal. Spilled it all over him. Lead for bullets? Yeah, that's it. He was cooking up lead in a fry pan. That was one of Billy's chores to make my bullets. <laughs> He always was a mite clumsy. <laughs> he sure messed himself up this time. That must have been a lot of lead. Yeah, 50, 60 pounds, I reckon. Mr. Gatliff, mm. that man of yours ducks all through with him. He said you can bury him now. Oh, no, I ain't paying for no burial. He's just a skinner I hired. I don't even know his last name. You're his boss, aren't you? You brought him in here. He's just a bum who worked for me. Well, um, oh, I mean, Hold it, miserable... Chester. All right, Gatliff, we'll take care of him. He caused me trouble enough. I don't want to hear no more about him ever. What about the skinner, Chester? Tell me. Oh, it was terrible, Mr. Dillon. Doc said he don't know how he lived as long as he did. Did he talk to Doc? Oh, goodness, no, the poor fella. How do you suppose it happened, Chester? Why, a hot lead. Had a whole pan full of it, they told me. Yeah, but what man's going to pick up 50 or 60 pounds of molten lead and spill it all over him? Oh, well, he... I hadn't thought of that. Of course, there's another way it could have happened. How's that? Somebody could have pushed him down into it. Oh, my, who? I don't know. Gatliff or maybe his skinner, Toby. I wonder where Toby went. He probably went over to the Alifraganza to drink up his wages. Oh, all right. Um, Chester, go do something about burying that man, huh? Yes, sir. I'll tend to it. <laughs> Hello, Toby. Huh? Oh. Hello, Marshal. Oh, uh, Sam. Yeah. Set out a bottle of rye and another glass, huh? Sure, Marshal. I'll uh, buy you a drink. You will? Well, sure, Marshal. Sure. Well, Toby, here's to your friend, Billy. He was no friend of mine, but he died a bad death. I'll drink to him. Uh. uh Tell me something, Toby. How did he and Gatliff get on? You noticed Gatliff's eyes, Marshal? I did. He got powder specks shot into them. They look like turkey eggs. Yeah. You don't get on with a man like that. How come I've never seen him in Dodge before? A man's greedy, Marshal. He's downright wicked about money. He figures he can save time, make more money by selling his hides to buyer's agents on the prairie. He gets less out there, but he can kill and sell more that way. Well, he came in with a load of hides today. Just because we made him come in with Billy. Oh. Uh, tell me about the accident, Toby, huh? Well, oh, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> Billy was melting lead in a fry pan, and the way I figured, he must have tripped somehow and fallen smack into it. When we rode in, we found him rolling around on the ground. That's all I know. When who rode in? Me and the cook. Well, where was Gatliff? Oh, he went in just ahead of us. How long ahead of you? Not long. Maybe 20 minutes. Ah. And then he found Billy first. Is that it? Yeah, so he did. I hadn't thought of that before, Marshal. So that's why you've been asking so many questions. Well, I wasn't sure, Toby. But I expect you're telling the truth. The cook could back up your story, I imagine. Sure. I'm telling the truth. So that's what happened. Gatluff killed him. He murdered him. Any idea why he would? Sure I do. He killed Billy so he wouldn't have to pay him his wages due. He'd been out four months. He must owe Billy seven, eight hundred dollars. Uh-huh. Are uh, you going back out on the prairie with him? I ain't afraid of him. But I'll be sleeping with one eye open from now on. And if you let on you're suspicious, he'll sure try to kill you. Not me. He can do his killing on somebody else. You, uh, you'll be leaving in the morning, I suppose, huh? About dawn, I reckon, soon as Gatliff hires new Skinner. Uh-huh. Well, uh, 
The bottle's yours, Toby. And uh, good luck. Oh, I sure do thank you, Marshal. Later in the day, Chester and a couple of other men buried Billy out on the hill. As Toby said, he died a bad death. And it was made worse by the man who had done it to him, going scot-free. But there was nothing I could do, and I tried to forget about it. They left Dodge next morning, and things were peaceful enough for a few days until... One night word came that there'd been a knifing in a nester camp across the river. We rode over to see what it was about. He was knifed in the back, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, but nobody saw it happen, Chester. No, sir. Looks like somebody got clean away with murder. What? Well, here's Yorkie Kelly. How are you, Yorkie? Hello. Oh, what are you doing here, Yorkie? I came looking for berries. It's a good thing I did. Oh? What do you mean? I saw that man get stabbed. What? You did? I heard them arguing, and I sneaked up just after he'd done it. They were all alone. Well, who did it, Yorkie? Did you recognize him? I never saw him before. Well, what did he look like? He was big, dirty looking. He had a buckskin shirt. Yeah. What? Anything else? He had funny eyes, Marshal. They had spots in them. Oh. Chester? Hmm? Gatliff. Hmm. Well, how in the world could you ever sneak up close enough to see his eyes, Yorkie? I live with the Arapahoes. Yeah. By golly, that's right. I... You know who did it, Marshal? Well, I do now, Yorkie. Thanks to you. I hope you catch him. I gotta get back. Moss Grimmett's waiting for me. So long, Yorkie. I guess it was Gatliff, all right, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Seemed like a dangerous kind of a man to be running loose. I got him now, Chester. As soon as I find him. Oh, I hope so, Mr. Dillon. I certainly do hope so. Mother, it does your heart good, I know, when your young folks eat all of their breakfast cereal. And that's why I'm so happy to tell you about new sugar crinkles. Sugar crinkles, you know, is the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. Crisp golden nuggets of sugar-coated rice. They make breakfast more fun than a circus. Why, young folks love sugar crinkles so much, they disappear like magic. Now, you've had experience with sugar-coated cereals that seem too sweet to you, and others that uh, just don't seem sweet enough to the youngsters. Well, what a wonderful surprise sugar crinkles will be to your whole family. For new sugar crinkles really are just right sweet. Remember, sugar crinkles make great snacks, too. Better get several packages. For your breakfast or a snack, you love sugar crinkles. Sugar crinkles can't be beat. Sugar ice cream that's just right sweet. With milk for the breakfast joy. That's a snack from the pack, oh boy. Can't be beat, just right sweet. Sugar crinkles good to eat. Now back to Gunsmoke. Since Gatliff would figure nobody had seen him, it wasn't likely that he'd run. And anyway, there wasn't much sense in trying to track him down in the dark. So Chester and I didn't start out until the next morning. Ordinarily, a man could ride into the prairie and disappear, but with Gatliff, it was a little different. At least we knew he'd be somewhere around Buffalo. It was late afternoon before we reached good hunting grounds and... Almost dark when we spotted the first hunter's camp. Come on over to the fire, stranger. Well, thank you. Supper will be ready soon. Hey, cook, throw some more tongue in that stew pot. Yeah, okay. If you don't like buffalo tongue, you'll go mighty hungry in this camp. <laughs> Thanks, mister. Hey, you're a lawman. Uh, Matt Dillon. 
a U.S. Marshal. My name's Tom Mercer. Uh, this is Chester Proudfoot. Mr. Mercer. Howdy. Our uh, supper will take a little longer yet. Anyway, my Skinners won't be in for a while. Sit down. Uh, thank you. Well, how you doing? Oh, fair, Marshal, fair. I killed over a hundred today. Uh, been here long? About a month. I'll move on a couple of weeks. I don't know, Marshal. I figure this whole southern herd's gonna be clean wiped out for a long. Next year, I'm going to Dakota. Too many hunters, maybe. Huh? That's just it. That's it exactly. Have uh, you seen any in the last day or two? Just who are you looking for, Marshal? A fellow by the name of Gatliff, a big man, speckled eyes. Uh, what's he done? Do you know him? No, I don't. Nobody's come near us in over a week. Yeah. Uh, you're not much help, then. Except for that stew the cook's making. Oh, you're like that. We're having dried apples, too. I mighty near could eat a buffalo raw, the entire beast. Hey, you must be part engine. Yeah, well, no, I've seen one of them eat a whole liver raw. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir, he got propped up against a tree and ate every bit of it. And then went sound asleep, right there in the sun. <laughs> he was sure some sight. Where'd you ever get that close to an Indian? Oh, Indians ain't always bad. No, that's true. But they're going to get real hungry when the herd's gone. That's so, Marshal. That's surely so. That's what makes them mad. Well, don't you think that's reason enough? Fellow told me a couple of weeks ago he ran into a bunch west of here. He was looking for scalps, all right, too. They... Oh, hey, here comes my Skinners. Now we can get outside of some of that stew. Oh, oh fine. Honey. <laughs> don't you ever feed this man, Marshal? <laughs> Only when he works, Mercy. Oh, no, Mr. Dillon. We spent the night in Tom Mercer's camp, and at dawn, just after breakfast, we said goodbye and rode on west. In the next two days, we met plenty of hunters, but we didn't find Gatliff. About noon of the third day, we cut the trail of a wagon train and figured it to be that of a hide buyer's agent who had come out into the prairie to do business on the spot. An hour or two later, we saw him. A long string of ox-drawn wagons piled high with hides. There was a man on horseback leading the train. We rode up to him. Hello there. Ah, that's quite a load you got, mister. 10,000 so far. Huh? What are you going way out here, Marshal? I'm uh, looking for a hunter by the name of Gadloff. You know him? Sure do. Just picked up a load from his rick early this morning. Is he in trouble? Yeah. Where is he? Straight south, a couple of miles. Can't tell you exactly. He moves around a lot. Well, that's close enough for us. Thanks a lot, mister. Sure, Marshal. Never did like him anyway. There's an empty rick. That must be it. Yeah. But he's moved his camp. Not far. If it was just this morning. Chester. Hmm? What's that out there? Where at? It looks like a man. Come on. Yeah, fella. Why, Mr. Dillon, it's that Skinner in his. Yeah. Uh, get some water, Chester. Yes, sir. Toby. Toby. Toby, can you hear me? He's been shot, Chester. Here's the water. Yeah. <laughs> Toby, it's Marshal Dillon. Huh? Give me a drink. Yeah, here. He shot me, Marshal. Well, what happened? Where's the rest of the crew? They run off. Took his wagon and, and the horses. He went kind of crazy when he found out. That, that's why he shot me. Where is he now? Uh, I don't know, Marshal. He shot me, and then he said he was going hunting. He's going loco. Now, loco. Now, now take, it, take it easy, Toby. Take it easy. You're going to be all right. I, I could hear him shooting that sharps a long time. And then he stopped. Where was he? Uh, which way, Toby? Off. Behind me there. I could hear him. Yeah. But Chester, stay with him, huh? I'm going after Gatliff. All right, you. Off 
off in the direction Toby had indicated, there lay a large, isolated hollow surrounded by low ridges. When I reached it, I dismounted and crawled up to where I could look down into it. There was no sign of Gatliff. But lying on the prairie floor were the bodies of countless fresh-killed buffalo. It was a strange sight. The old bulls and the cows and the little calves lying there, blackening the prairie grass. I got up and stood looking at it for a long time. And then suddenly, out in the middle, I thought I saw a slight movement. And a second later, there came the familiar boom of a Sharps 50. And I dropped behind the range and waited. And then Chester rode up. Mr. Yeah. I thought I'd better come along. You see... Toby's dead. Is that it? Yes, sir. All right. Well, Gatliff's down there in the middle of the hollow, but we can't get anywhere near him as long as he's got that Sharps rifle. He's killed a small herd of buffalo in there, and now he's lying out in the center of them. Well, that's the darndest thing I ever heard of, Mr. Dillon. He must have gone crazy, just like Toby said. Yeah. What's he shooting at now? Hey, Mr. Dillon, the way he's spacing them shots... Yeah, that's the signal for help, Chester. Come on. Say, maybe it's just a trap. Oh, be ready to take cover behind one of these animals. It might be. Sounds like he's been hurt. Yeah. Just keep your head up. Mm. There he is. Behind that big bull. Yeah, I see him. Wow. Mr. Dillon, he... He's all... There have been horses in here, Chester. Indians. Oh, my goodness. Come on. Uh, that was his last effort, Chester. He's dead now. Mr. Dillon, that's awful. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Chester, let's get out of here. I don't know how the Indians caught Gatliff. He'd gone a little mad, and maybe that made it easy for him. But they'd finally got themselves a buffalo hunter. And into their unbelievably savage torture of him had gone all the hatred and desperation of a race being slowly starved and driven from their homeland. And then they'd put him there, surrounded by his own bloody slaughter, and they'd gone off with a gesture of contempt, leaving his rifle and his ammunition by his side. And having seen what they did to him, I'll never know how he managed to fire even one of those shots. For all of his evil, Gatliff had died harder than any man I'd ever seen. Chester and I rode back to Dodge, and it was never mentioned between us again. In just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's adventure on Gunsmoke. You know, what you are tomorrow depends on what you eat today. So, Mother, be sure that the big and little Indians at your house always eat a good breakfast. And tell me, what could be better for breakfast than Post Toasties? Post Toasties, you know, are the heap good cornflakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. But all of the talking in the world couldn't tell you how downright delicious Post Toasties are. You have to taste those crackling crisp flakes. Yes, you have to taste that sweet kernel corn flavor toasted. Then you'll know how perfectly wonderful breakfast can be. Put Post Toasties in your shopping list right now, Mother. Just watch how your whole tribe goes for them. Remember, Post Toasties are the heap good corn flakes. Thank you. 
Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was written especially for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Tom Tully, John Daner, Richard Beals, Jack Edwards, and Louis Jean Height. Harley Bear is Chester. Ken Peters speaking. Thank you so much for listening to RV Talk Radio. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos with a whole wide world. We would really appreciate that. I mean share it. I mean the whole world. All of it. Please. Please.